welcome back so in this video we'll be talking about federated identity provider so basically federated identity management is a configuration that can be made between two or more trusted domains to allow the consumers of those domains to access applications and services using the same digital identity so that is what the definition of a federated identity provider is so as you can see here we have used google so basically if you click Google, we have client ID as well as client secret. So we have to add these two in order to get the Google. So whenever you create, so like let's say a login or something, the clients can uh, have an option of Google so that they can directly log in uh, through Google and access your applications. For that, you have to add here. And similarly, you can add, uh, add Facebook as well. But in this case, let's see how we can add Google and how we can get client ID as well as client secret key. For that, we have to go to the developer console. So let me add the developer console here. So this is a dashboard related to that. However, I have created uh, my application here related to that, where I got the secret uh, ID as well as uh, key. So let me show you how we can create it. So basically I have two apps. So let me create a new project and let's see how we can uh, get the secret key for that let's add uh, the id first for that let me go back and let me add here two so i'm just not selecting any organization so let's click create so this is the second application that uh, we are going to create So let's uh, wait for it to be done and let's select that. So you can see here we have selected the app too. And uh, so as you can see, we have uh, created it and let's go to the APIs and services. Let's click that. And here we have various options. And in this, let's go to auth consent screen. So let's click that. And here we have two different options. One is internal and the other one is external. So since we are dealing with the other one, let's go ahead and click uh, external and create. So here we have to give the app information. So coming to the app name. So let me add the name accordingly. So it will be Azure AD2 since this is the second application that I'm creating. And coming to the user support email, this will be my email, which I'm using for sure. And you can add app logo if you want. And uh, let's leave it everything default and coming to the authorized domains. Let, uh, let us add the Microsoft domain here. So let me add the domain. And let me add the email ID as well. So save and continue. So I don't need to add anything. I'm just leaving everything as default. If you want to add test users, you can do that. And uh, I think that should be fine. Summary, let's go back to the dashboard here. You can publish the app, but in this case, I'm just leaving it default. And once this is done, Let's go ahead to the credentials here. If you click the credentials, we have an option called create credentials. So click that. And there is an option called auth client ID. Click that. So in this case, there will be various different types of uh, application type, web application, Android, Chrome, and so on. So in this case, we'll be selecting web application. And here I will be keeping Azure AD. and uh, coming to the redirect uh, URL, let me add them. So first URL and coming to the second URL, let me paste that one here. can see here we have to add our tenant ID which we can get from active directory and uh, the other one is let me add that one too here you have to add your tenant name so 
this is what it is so if you go back here you will be getting your tenant id and uh, uh, main directory you can get your tenant id as well as uh, the domain that it's related to so you can get the information from there and uh, once you add them so you have to just add them in that particular location and you have to just uh, click create so once you create it you'll be uh, you'll be prompted to a secret id as well as a client secret sorry i mean uh, client id as well as client secret so you'll be getting these two options and you have to just copy them and uh, paste here external identities all providers so when you click google and you have to just paste those ids here so once it is done you can see the information like it will be uh, prompted here similarly you can go ahead with facebook so this is how simple it is to add uh, the other providers so in the previous uh, videos when i was uh, trying to create uh, let's say user flows when i was trying to create the user flows i was only getting microsoft and uh, azure active directory so these were options that i was getting but now since i added google let's see if we can create the user flows so first let's uh, go to the overview external collaboration and here you have to click yes save so we have all discussed this in the previous video so i'm just checking uh, whether i was able to access google here or not so when you create the user flow as you can see here there is a new uh, checkbox that has been arrived called google so we are also getting uh, this one as well so it's working good so this is how you have to use uh, the federated ID provider and you can add them using uh, the client ID and the client secret key. So once if you done, go ahead and you can directly delete them as well. So identity provider, you can just delete it. And uh, you can delete the projects as well. So this is how you have to proceed. I hope you guys have understood the concept of today's video. And I'll be keeping the relevant videos in the description for you to watch. And if you've liked the video, please click the like button below. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel and please share the video. Thanks everyone.